Hello Aries, it's here with a reading for the sign of Aries. This reading could resonate with anyone who has Aries strongly in their chart. Um, sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs included. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is my free form or freestyle type of reading. I'm going to look at your um, in, internal energies and I'll look at the situation that is going on around you, the external energies, and we'll be looking out um, seven to ten days or two weeks, so a very short period of time that we'll be looking out. I will have an extended reading um, that I will be doing, and I will be determining what I'm going to be focusing on as I go through this general reading. So um, let's get going. It's freestyle all the way, baby. It's freestyle all the way. Let's see what we have here. We've got some flippers already, which tells me that there is something popping off for Aries, something popping off for Aries. See what's, what we've got going here. And we have the tower coming out. Now these cards have um, detail that are that is a little bit harder to see. So um, I if I'm called to do it, I don't I'm not gonna do it on every card because it really slows down the reading. But if I'm called to do it, I will um, bring the card up to the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Internal energies, internal energies now, internal energies, internal energies. Look at the internal energies first. We have 733. Three. There's something significant about that number. Um, there's two threes and a seven. This is about, um, it has to do with timing and it has to do with um, I'm just seeing like putting something on a platform, adding to something. There's something being added to, something that's at a base level that's being added to. This is your internal energy, remember? I know these are lined up interestingly here, but this is the internal energy through these three cards. Aries, all right, the energy is strong. For one thing, you have the tower, you have um, the wheel of fortune, and you have the chariot in your external environment. So there's a lot popping off here. This energy is big. It's powerful. Um, I'm going to try to calm it down just a little bit. I'm going into the internal energy now, and you have the seven of swords. So you are going through a period of, of self-analysis, self-analysis. Aries, um, there's something that just doesn't sit right with you internally. So this could be somewhat emotional for you. I know that it is swords energy. Uh, but I feel like it could be somewhat emotional for you. Um, you could be going through some, through some familial pain or um, some sort of adjustment. You're making an adjustment due to something that you've experienced that has been confusing or difficult or painful for you. So you're, you're in the process of making an adjustment to how you, what your belief system is with the sword energy, what your belief system is, what you are, what your understanding is what you know to be your own truth. Um, there is some sort of a revision or an adaptation that you're moving through. Now, the Seven of Swords, um, the initiation of the Seven of Swords can be difficult. Um, it is one of the more difficult energies, but usually with the Seven of Swords, there's something that you're getting over. It's something that you're responding to. So this is already, um, for this group of you, Aries, this has already happened to you. I feel like the painful part of it has already happened to you and now you're adjusting something in your belief system or maybe maybe forming a new thought pattern or making a, a big decision um, and, and you're really moving forward now in that new way. Um, you have the Three of Wands here and the Three of Pentacles. So I think that internally you, you are feeling um, optimistic, you're feeling inspired, um, you're, you're feeling like you're getting somewhere in your own um, in your own energy level and in your own frame of mind and in, in your own ability to think in a positive way, you're you're getting somewhere now. 
um, somebody or a, a, a situation or an environment could have really affected you in the past. And you're making strides now in, internally. Uh, you're really feeling alive again. And um, your mindset is is really um, expanding and you're able to really start to see the potential that's around you. You have this energy of industrious now. You you have a busyness. You're you're go, you're you have a busyness that's inside of you. You're busy doing this. <laughs> well, I mean, the external energy usually does reflect the internal energy, and in the environment, you have a lot of busy energy. So um, I, I think that you're really quite aligned, my friends. This is a group of you that are very aligned. Uh, there's something here. Oh, and look at the seven of swords over the top of the tower. I mean. Uh, that's what we mean when we say that the internal usually matches the external or the vice versa. So there's something here that you're adjusting based on something that was painful that happened to you. Um, it happened in your outer environment, but it certainly infected, um, infected. Oh my gosh. We cannot get away from this. Can we? <laughs> it certainly affected, um, how you felt internally, how you felt in your own, and it was with the sword. So it has you, how you felt in your own way of thinking, your own mindset, your understanding, your belief system, what you felt was to be true. Something about that has been changed and you're feeling better now. You're, you're getting back up on your feet again, um, in your own energy level and how you feel about your life. This is the yin energy that's, that's recovering. The feminine energy within you, the yin energy that's within you is recovering now. Uh, in your external environment, you do have something here. Um, you have the tower energy. You have the um, page of pentacles or the, I mean, the knight of pentacles. Uh, you have the wheel of fortune and the chariot energy. So you're making steady progress now. You could be seeing some sort of increase in finances, some real stable movement forward. Uh, the knight of pentacles is, is followed by the wheel of fortune. It's followed by the chariot. So whatever this tower is, this big change is coming in for you, and I'll go deeper into these energies, whatever this tower was where your foundations crumbled or there was a major surprise that really had you on the run, right? You were really on the run here. Um, and this is a very interesting way um, that this card is depicted. Um, if we look at the tower in the background, we see um, energies here, people here, energies here on the run um, and as some sort of, um, interesting individual walks away with, with kind of a sly look in his eyes. Um, and I feel like sometimes that is the universe could come in and really change things up. Um, what, whoever it was or whatever it was that came into your life and changed things up in a major way, I do feel like you felt quite scattered and you were on the run and things all of a sudden, um, okay, I'm being shown like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Aries. So we're, we're getting this, this is a, this is a very interesting, funny humor that I have here because what they're showing me is that, and, and I don't think for, for me, for all of you, this has to do with the virus. I really don't. I'm sure the virus is probably part of this tower because um, we are moving into, into a new phase, into a new universal phase in some way or another. And, and everyone can feel it. It is something that cannot be denied around the world. Not that any of us know what it is. I mean, we all have our opinions and we all think we know, but ultimately um, the, 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 higher power the 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 source energy knows what it is and and do we you know so so it's like we're all kind of getting rocked a little bit aren't we we're all kind of rocked back on our feet and we're all taking a moment to say well this is something unusual this is something that i never expected could possibly happen in the world and even for those of us who are the most opinionated and the most knowledgeable and we have written you know i mean it's even for 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 those people who have been leaders um, up till now and will continue to be leaders, they have also been rocked back on their feet. So um, this is a universal surprise that's come in here. Um, whether this tower is talking about something big in your life, such as the um, the COVID-19 or or whether it's something that's actually going on separately in your life, I do feel like if, if you look at this card, it's, it's they're showing me this picture of um, when you... 
they're just showing me a picture in a cave with bat. And that's what's funny about it. I'm telling you, this is a very funny humor. This is showing me in a cave with bats and having something interrupt them. And they all flying around in surprise. You know, it's that, it's that flurry, you know. And, and of course, I am nervous about bringing that story forward because I think that this virus has really affected so many people in such a harsh way. Um, and, and there is a real seriousness to this, just like the tower. There is a real seriousness, a real seriousness to the tower. So while we have humor and while we can find escape through humor, um, we do accept and we do see around us and many of us are feeling it around us. And whether it's a loss of life or whether it is a loss of employment, uh, of em of employment or just seeing the world change around us and, and looking at it with awestruck eyes. Um, we are, many of us are, our lives have changed in, in unfathomable ways, unfathomable ways. So while sometimes we do use humor and we do find ourselves um, chuckling at the most unusual things, we, there is a seriousness here that, um, that, that must be acknowledged and must be swam in just for a moment or two, um, whether, uh, you know, whether we are being affected directly by it or not. This is something that's pervasive throughout the human race and I think throughout the earth. Um, so as we're moving forward, we do see now stable um, st stability coming in. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is a serious energy. It's an energy of real movement. It's an energy of real improvement, Aries. Um, there could be increase in revenue here. There could be a relationship that's really stabilizing. Um, there, there could be um, a, a situation that's moving forward and, and finally seeing tangible success. Uh, whatever this is, the Knight of Pentacles does not move unless there is real improvement. The Knight of Pentacles does not go sideways and does not go backwards. The Knight of Pentacles only moves forward. Sometimes he moves very slowly, he or she. Sometimes the Knight of Pentacles moves very slowly, inch by inch. But there is usually either non-movement or movement forward. We don't really see the Knight of Pentacles going sideways. So um, th there is real stability here, real improvement here for this group of Aries people. I realize now my voice is getting strong, so I'm going to mellow it down just a little bit, Aries. Some of you like it, and, and for some of you, it, it, depending on what your natal chart is, um, sometimes when I can get into the Aries energy, I can get quite strong because I am a lot I have a lot of aqua in my chart, and so I just fly around in your in your energy. So I'm going to lower it just a little bit. I know some of you like it, but for others of you that might have, um, a, a, you know, earth energies in your chart, it might be kind of hard to to um, or or a water energy in your chart, it might be hard for you to hear me constantly yelling in your ear as I'm in this energy. Because look what I have here, the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot. So there's something really incredible that's happening here. Things are really moving fast. With the Knight of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Chariot, uh, this is a group of Aries people that are really encountering massive change. They're, they're encountering massive um, improvement in finances or whatever it is that you're experiencing. It is moving forward. You are staying balanced. You're staying aligned and you're, you're making your way into some real improvement here, right? Your reality is indeed changing and adapting and improving as each day moves forward. Whether you can see it or not, Aries, these energies here clarify that whatever this tower was and however it affected you, it, it has somehow, some way propelled you into great change. And this great change is, does somehow include new stability for yourself. It includes new momentum, new fortune possibly. And the chariot, you're doing this in such a specialized way. You're staying aligned. You're staying balanced. Um, your yin energy and your yang energy is healthy and it's working together. Um, your belief system, your care for that you're giving yourself, the rest that you're getting, the way that you're eating in such a healthy way is helping to, this is your yin energy, is helping the yang energy, the movement energy, the, the production energy, um, the outside energy to really move in, in such a powerful way. So you have um, both the, the feminine and the masculine within yourself moving forward very powerfully in a very aligned way as you move into the future. And we're looking at the next week or two here. So let's dig deeper now into some of these energies that we see here. I think I am going to 
focus on your external world in, in, instead of your internal energy, because I think your internal energy has uh, is stabilizing and it is growing in strength. Um, this is an external world that you have going on here is quite exciting. So let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper here and see what we can find. <sighs> Let me take a breath, Aries. Goodness gracious. Let's start with the tower and let's just go across. Tell me more about the tower. Tell me more about the tower. Three of Swords. That was painful. It was painful. Seven of Pentacles. You really had to work at you really had to work at getting yourself out of this stress and anxiety, this hurt. Whatever happened here, um, something with the Three of Swords was was quite destructive um, to your emotional self, to your mental capacity. Um, you could have really went into a depression or you went into a very stressful emotional state. And with the Seven of Pentacles, it tells me that you really had to invest in yourself. You had to invest in yourself. What do we mean by investing in yourself? You had to intentionally move yourself out of that place, whether it was in rest, whether it was in just relaxing, flow, flowing with the energies, um, whether it was an exercise or just working hard to get yourself out of a situation. You really had to take time here. The Seven of Pentacles is a working energy. It's an investing energy. And, and sometimes with the Seven of Pentacles, we don't reap the rewards right away. We have to wait to re reap the rewards. And I think perhaps, Aries, you still haven't quite reaped all the rewards yet. You haven't really seen a return of your investments yet. That is more than your cost basis. Um, Sorry, I am, I, I've got my, that is, that is more than the money that you spent in it, you know? So, so whatever this is here, um, you, you're working to pull yourself out of this chaotic energy and we see it continuing to expand, continuing to grow and continuing to gain in power as you move forward over the next few weeks. Um, you do have the Knight of Pentacles here. So let's go into the Knight of Pentacles energy. Tell me more about this Knight of Pentacles. Tell me more about this Knight of Pentacles energy. Queen of Swords. Queen of Cups. Six of Wands. This is very interesting. You could you could have two partners here that are moving forward with something new. You could have co-workers here. You could have family members. You could have lovers. You could have business partners. You could have countries that take on a feminine energy that are working together. You could have communities that are taking on a feminine energy and working together. What we mean by feminine energy is healing, what we believe, um, stillness, um, finding time to recover. So, so there has been some downtime with the yin energy. Usually there is an energy of heaviness or downtime or resting or sleep. Um, it, it, it is a down energy while the yang energy, the, the masculine energy is an up energy. Um, so these are two energies, two people or two situations here that have been going through a restructuring, a restructuring of a belief system, a restructuring of health, um, revitalization period. So they have been in a, it, it's like an inactive period. If you're looking at it from a masculine perspective, it's an inactive period, but it must be, it must be um, experienced in order to to move back into the more masculine. So this is a this is a um, two people here who have been in a restructuring phase where they have been thinking through this and healing through this and taking time to um, allow this to really permeate their being. Um, and and we see here with this this Knight of Pentacles that soon there will be movement. For right now, now I understand why it's the Knight of Pentacles because it might have been slow going and this might have been difficult for you Aries to be in this slow going energy or you might be experiencing right now. But all in all, you have the Six of Wands here. Let's take a look at the Six of Wands. You have a Six of Wands. 
Look at that horse. It's ferocious. And look who she, who she has with her. Looks like the hermit or ancestor or spirit. Her guides. So we have two people here. Doesn't have to be two people. But we have two different energies. So you could be taking on these energies within yourself, or you could be feeling these energies outside of yourself. First, let's talk about these different energies. We have the Queen of Swords. Now, the Queen of Swords is an air energy. It's Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Um, it is an energy that delves more deeply in the mind. Um, and what does the mind do? The mind is, is a control center for the body. The mind is... Uh, it does have connection to source within it, which um, is the the crown chakra. Uh, the mind has the ability to create belief systems and to find understandings and to form uh, plans of action. Um, the, the mind is also an expressive energy, so it expresses. The mouth and the eyes and the nose um, are within the framework of where the mind is in the face. Um, and so oftentimes we, we uh, take expression and, um, have a, we, we connect it very closely with the mind. Um, and expressions are a way for us to, um, take what is revolving or evolving in our minds and express it out around us in our external world. So, um, this, this is a person or this is a situation that is, um, in a, in a place now where they're expressing their thoughts, they're coming up with ideas. They're in a very, um, communicative energy. And a lot of the times with the queen of swords, she, had, she does have something very important to communicate. And oftentimes, um, when we think of the queen of swords, her focus is in the underdog. Her focus is, um, that she has a very close, um, commonality or identity or connection with people who struggle with living beings who struggle. That includes the earth. That includes, um, what is on the earth in, in however way she connects with it. So she is usually identifying or finding commonality with that, which struggles because she has been in struggles in her life and she has found, um, a, a way to really see the truth of struggle and see the value of struggle and see how, um, those who struggle, um, really can, can use a helping hand and the value of a helping hand. So she is in, in one way or another, a helping hand, to those living beings um, that are around her. And, and many times when she communicates, she communicates as a representative of those who struggle. So um, we're, we're not saying in this, in this situation for all of you that there is um, an underdog type of energy, but for many of you, there will be this kind of energy that is connected with the Queen of Swords. Um, in whatever that's going on here in this situation for you, there is an energy of communication. So if this is two people, there's one of you here that is much more communicative. Um, this person could be um, putting a lot of energy in creating communications and ensuring that there's quality communication and ensuring that everyone receives fair communication. Um, she, This person, whether it's a male or female, could be focused on communicating to everyone right? Not just a certain group of people, but to everyone. So it, it's going to fit with you differently, uh, depending on what your situation is. But this is a very feminine, communicative energy. The king of swords, the masculine energy, more focuses not so much on the words of it, but on the decisions of it, right? On the justice of it. Um, and he considers man or woman, the masculine energy of the air energy is is much more focused on the overall justice of the overall situation and making um, fair decisions while the queen of swords, the feminine is much more apt to focus on bringing the words of the underserved forward so that they can be heard. Right. And however she does that, the other energy here is also a feminine energy, whether it's a man or a woman, it is in a feminine energy. We're looking at the queen of cups energy. The Queen of Cups energy is a Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces energy. It doesn't have to be that sign, but it will take on tendencies and characteristics of those signs. 
This is an energy that is focused on health and well-being of his or herself. So this is someone who could have been injured um, with, with this crisis that has come in. Um, this is someone who could be quite empathic, um, could be quite um, affected by others' health and others' well-being. This person's energy could be sort of like a chameleon where their energy um, drops or raises depending on the environment that, that they're in. So if they're with a group of people that have a dense energy, that have a lower mindset, and I don't mean a lower mindset, that have a different mindset that could be a denser energy, um, this person's energy could immediately fall or drop or raise um, to meet the vibration of the people that are around her or him. So this person could very much be impacted by how others are feeling, if they're feeling sick, if they're feeling stressed, if they're feeling excited, if they're feeling empowered, you're going to see this person respond oftentimes in the, in the same, in a, in a very, uh, typically in a, in a very similar way to, to the environment that's around her or him. So this person does have challenges in that. Remember, they are an emotional energy with a cup energy. So um, their, their goal now is to really understand what brings them health and vitality, um, how to love and be aware of their own selves, how to nurture themselves. Um, and they are going through some sort of a, a focus. There is an intentional focus now on this sort of an energy within them. They really care about the world around them. They care about other people. Um, and they could have mood fluctuations fluctuations um, if they are in a stressful place in their life. So um, the card is in the upright, though. All of these energies are in the upright. So I do think this is someone that is just focused on love and vitality and nourishment within herself and within the world that is around her. Um, we see now these two energies moving forward with something new. Now, they could have been stalled for a little while. Um Again, they, this could be two women, two men, a man and a woman, right? It, it doesn't really, it's not really the genders we're talking about. It's the characteristics of this energy. Um, these people are moving forward and doing something different. So they could be entering into a relationship. They could be starting a new business. They could be starting a new project that they're working on at work. Um, they could be working differently. They could be heading out into the community and doing something new in the community. Um, whatever they're doing, they're stepping forward in a new way. Um, they're up leveling, right? They're, they're stepping into a, a, a more empowered, a more passionate, um, a, a more um, willing, we could even say a more willing version of themselves um, with these two people. And as we see by the energy of this card, this person could feel guided to do this. They could feel that, or these people could be feeling guided to do this. They could be feeling like they really don't have any other chance, or um, they, they might feel like they might not have another chance. Um, I have to allow the words to come through, don't I? Um, but they could be even feeling like um, they they might not be able to do anything else. They might be pulled so powerfully to do this, or the universe might be steering them so, um, so strenuously to this one avenue that they really don't have any other option but to step into this, whatever this is. But they are coming forward. They are rising up into a new level. They're, they're getting upon, um, they're, they're rising above the crowd in some way or another, and they're stepping forward. And this is being seen with this page of pentacles. This is being seen. So um, the people in the community or in the workplace or in the family are seeing this and they are being inspired by the six of the six of wands energy, by this rising up and stepping forward in a new way. It is inspiring. The six of wands is probably one of the most inspiring energies of the tool of tarot because it talks about people who are stepping forward into some sort of a new experience, um, who are doing something they've not done before. Um, these people recognize, though, that they have the capacities and the skills and the talents, uh, that they have confidence in themselves now, that they may make mistakes, and they may have um, to add uh, to to really move through adaptations in their in their journey, but they have the capacity and the willingness to step forward now and do this and take this on um, and face this new New, this new future or this new endeavor um, that they've either chose to step forward onto or that the universe has led them towards. 
Um, so it does look like there's stable movement now here with the Page of Pentacles, and it does have something to do with additional improvement or enhancement in, in the reality, and that often can be um, work and revenue is increased or um, something coming in here that adds a sense of security, a sense of well-being to, to life in some way. Um, it, it is interesting here with this, this Queen of Swords and this Queen of Cups um, that we have here. It is interesting, and I think I want to, oh, there are so many. Well, I think in the extended reading, I'm going to go deeper into these two energies with the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups to see what they have to say, to see what their intentions are. Um, just dig deeper. For now, though, I want to go into the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot because these are also very, I mean, when you think about it, the Wheel of Fortune and the Chariot almost are more significant energies than the than the, than the the um, Knight of Pentacles. Aries, this is a very... This is a strong, these are strong energies that you're feeling. So I'm going to leave the, the, those two out. Wheel of Fortune now. Tell us more about this Wheel of Fortune. Tell us more please about the Wheel of Fortune. High Priestess. Tell us more about the Wheel of Fortune. Knight of Cups. Moon. Tell us more about the chariot, please. Tell us more about the chariot energy. Chariot energy. Sorry. All right. Let's let's go with the wheel of fortune first, and then we'll look at the chariot energy. So we have the Wheel of Fortune here, and what I've gotten from, from this is the High Priestess, um, the Knight of Cups, and the Moon Energy. I realize the details of these cards are, are harder to see in the camera. And this is connected to the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, let me get in these energies here. Well, this is a very emotional energy in the first place. So as you're moving forward, this could really be gripping your heart center. So you could be quite emotional about this. Um, and we have the feminine, both of these people are in feminine energies right now, which is telling me there's a lot of yin energy. You might want to look up yin, Y-I-N, and read about it and see how you're kind of fitting in with this. Um, everyone is going to fit in with it a little differently. If you're a male and you're in the yin energy, you could be really going through emotional an emotional time period right now. If you're a feminine energy, but you are often in the masculine energy, you could be going through a very um, emotional time right now where you're really needing to care for yourself and get sleep and eat well and um, really study the kinds of foods to eat when you're in the yin energy and you and uh, because it does look like there is a balancing that's coming in here for you fairly soon or, or relatively soon um, in the next week or two you're going to be able to balance this energy whatever is happening though there is movement and it's really hard Aries, to have movement when you're in a yin energy. Remember, movement energy is a more masculine energy. So this is moving forward, whether you want it to or not. It is exciting. It is something that is going to bring you change and bring you stability. But it could be really hard to deal with when you're in, when you're still sort of in that in that feminine healing period um, or a yin energy. And remember, we both have yin and we have yin and yang and the yang energy within us. Um, so we have the high priestess here. This is um, you really with the wheel of fortune, you really starting to understand um, who you are, um, where you gain your strength, um, where you receive your information. You're starting to really understand um, your guidance system your your spiritual team or your religious team. Um, this is about inner trust. This is about the energy of faith and the energy of guidance and the energy of internal um, it's becoming an inner it's having it's strengthening your inner knowing. I'm going to go into this energy just a little bit and explain it just a little bit more because I think for some of you it could be it could be a, a um, 
the the more even though these energies are powerful and they're beautiful and they're so amazing Aries um while you're in this period of time you could be feeling a little bit conflicted it could be unusual for you to be in this type of er in this type of energy the high priestess is gaining a strong internal knowledge of what your belief system is what you believe in what your knowing is what you connect with as a faith system and how you connect in with those energies and those structures that help you to resonate with all of this, right? It's, it's like you are, you're not only determining and realizing what you believe in, you're beginning to find a way to put, to make sense of it all. You're beginning to find a way to put it into categories, for example, or to be able to write it, be able to put it in your journal or be able to express it um, in, in a way that helps you. So it, the high priestess is a quiet energy. She's not really too much of a talker. So whatever you're doing here in finding a way to make sense of what you believe and what you feel is happening to you right now, you're able to make some sort of sense about it. That's what I'm meaning to say. Thank you. I'm, I'm meaning to say that you're, you're being able to really kind of within your mind and within your heart, find a way to like categorize it and move this bit over here and move this bit over here. And I think this over here and it's, it's becoming something that's quite solid within you. And this is going to bring an energy of confidence and comfort into how you feel let's say in the middle of the night or in the early morning, or as if you have to have a difficult conversation with someone, how you feel when you leave that situation and you go home, how you feel when you do that, you're going to feel more peaceful. You're going to feel more aligned. Um, and you, and you're not, you're going to find yourself that you're not as easily to be rocked, right? You're, you're much more, your roots are planted. And you're less apt to sway to and fro with a high priestess energy. I um, mean, it is a quieter energy. So this is something that's happening within you. And you might be having a little bit of a hard time explaining it or even really feeling Aries that you might not need to explain it. It's no one else's business, perhaps you might be thinking, or you might be thinking that no one is really going to understand this very, very well. We do have um, the Knight of Cups. So you're moving forward in a very compassionate, loving way. Um, you're working on um, healing and, and nourishing yourself and um, moving into a, a stable place emotionally in your life um, so that you can feel more energy and, and more alive and, and more connected with the world around you. We also have the moon energy. See how strong and feminine and emotional these energies are. So you're really moving through this energy. You are going to come out the other side as you move into the chariot energy. So um, please realize if you're in this very emotional um, needing rest and needing recuperation kind of an energy that this will pass. Um, the moon energy is here. So I, I really think that things um, and, and information and the future um, is, is really going to start to, to be recognized. So what seems as something big and unknown to you now is going to, to settle in a bit and you're going to feel better about this as you move forward, better about the unknown future, better about what's happening in your life. You're going to feel more stable about it. Even though you might not know more, you're going to feel a stability about it. You're going to be able to handle it better emotionally, handle it better emotionally. Um, so, so that's what's really moving forward. That's what's really happening here is you're clearing out some of probably some old energies that are deep within you that um, with this shift now that we have in the energies around us, the universal change that we're experiencing, um, some of these older energies that are within us really have to be purged at this time um, as we move forward into a, a more um, a, a more changed person and a more changed world, more changed society. All right, let's look at this chariot energy and then we'll move into the extended. Chariot energy, please. Chariot energy. Chariot energy. 
All right, we have the lovers. We have the ace of cups. So yeah, some of you could be working your way through a love relationship. Doesn't have to be for everyone. These energies permeate through whatever the situation is. You'll know if you're resonating with this message. Let's just get one more energy out here. Look at all of them. They're all flipping. We have two aces now. Ace of swords, ace of cups, and the lovers. So um, with the aces that we have... Um, with the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups, there's new inspiration here. There's new love here. There's new compassion here. I think that there's a decision that's being made as you move into the next couple of weeks. Um, we do have the lover's energy here. So there could be an intense relationship that you're having with someone. Um, this is definitely the yin and yang energy that I've been speaking of this whole reading. So you could be in one energy in totality and you could have another person that's taking on the, the characteristics of the other energy, no matter if that, that's the case or not, in each of us, we have those same energies. So um, it, this, this the lover's energy can be, um, can signify balance that you are having within yourself. And it can also signify balance that you're having in a relationship that's around you. Um, whether this is a business partnership, a love relationship, um, uh, um, a relationship between two communities or two groups of people, um, it does look like there's new resurgence of love there is, um, there could be a new relationship that's, that's starting here with the Knight of Pentacles. It could have been a big surprise. It could have been a big change in your life. Um, and you could be going through a very emotional phase with it. Um, and whatever this is, um, and, and we see the Ace of Swords is in reverse. So, um, I do think that there, there is something here that's coming to light. Um, this could be something that you didn't really think was true. Um, this could be something that you have decided to allow yourself to, to surrender into. Um, the Ace of Cups is in the upright and the Ace of Swords is in, the, in, is in, re, in reverse. So in the past, you may not have allowed yourself to think of this. You may not have allowed yourself to um, be in this energy. I, I realize I have three other cards here, so we're going to take these cards as well. We always, there's always a reason for everything, and I have to learn how to um, accept that even in my own readings. I'm working on my ego as well. <laughs> so there is a situation here that's that's starting. Now, the first cards I pulled on the chariot um, were the Knight of Swords, the Three of Swords, and the Five of Cups. So I think what we have here, um, Aries, is we have a continuation of the chariot. What we have that's happening first is that you're moving your way through old emotional situations. Um, you are expressing those. So you could be telling people those, telling people of those. You could be expressing those. You could be ending um, situations that you have. You could be finally communicating about some of these hurts and wounds and struggles that you've been moving through. Um, you could be sharing what you're going through with other people because you have the three of swords with the five of cups. This talks about pain and sorrow and stress and anxiety that you are moving through um, with the Knight of Swords. It tells me that you're communicating about them. You're realizing the truth about them. Um, you, you're being very direct about the situation that you've been through, maybe with the tower, maybe something that's happened before the tower. But I do think that as you finish um, moving through these emotional energies, Aries, that the body does need a way of releasing those energies. So just thinking about it and just feeling it sometimes is not enough. Sometimes it's very useful to cry or to write, to do something physical, to allow the energy itself, once it's felt and once it's realized, to allow it to be removed from the body. And we do that in exercise. We can do that with crying or in anger. We can do that in writing. We can do that in speaking, but it usually has some form. It, it does come with some form of, of expression in what, whatever way um, that you're, you feel comfortable doing it. So um, as you're moving into the chariot energy, I see that you are able to really express this energy outside of you and, and get it out of you. Um, and, and it will sink down into the earth. When you do that, the earth will recycle it. Um, the trees will recycle it. It will be recycled. Um, and then as you're moving out of that energy, you're moving into this new inspired love energy um, with, with the Ace of Swords in reverse. You are surrendering into this. You're moving into some kind of uh, something that you just never thought you'd go there. You would never thought you'd do that. You never thought you'd believe that. You'd never thought that you would say that. 
You never thought you would decide that. It's something like that. And it's love. It's compassion. It's something that truly inspires you. And it's connected with the lover. So there could be a big decision that you're making here about a partner. Or you're making some big decision about work or some something that you're doing within the community. Um, something that you have an intense relationship with. Whether it's a person. Whether it's the work that you do. Whether it's a project that you have. There is some sort of a decision that's being made that could be somewhat of a surprise for you. And it has to do with being so inspired and so in love um, and, and feeling um, so refreshed because because you have truly cleared some old energy out of here, um, Aries. You truly have cleared some old energy out. So it's quite interesting, and I'm very interested to go into these energies deeper. Um, this reading has gone on long enough, so I am going to move to the extended now. I'm going to definitely go into this situation deeper to see what we have here. We're going to look at intention. We're going to look at um, what these two energies are saying. What are they saying? What are they intending to do? What's going to happen as the future moves forward, maybe into um, maybe into the beginning of May? We can kind of see how this moves along. So that's what I'm going to do in the extended. I hope this makes sense, Aries. It, they are big energies, uh, and it's very rare to have such big energies connected in with the yin energy. Usually, it's more comfortable to be in the more masculine energy when we have such big energies, but... But this is, there is a major change going on right here and energies are entwining and merging in, in ways that I've never felt before. So um, I guess in a way it does make sense. All right, I'm going to move into the extended now. For those of you that would like more information, the link to that is in the comment section and in the information section below. Um, for those of you that are happy with this, that's why I do this. This is, from my perspective, a comprehensive reading, and I hope that it's helped you in some way, my friends. All right, thank you very much, Aries. It's always a pleasure to read for you.